All right, everyone, welcome to this epic size tutorial. I say epic because there is so much information in here that it cannot fit in one video. In fact, it's going to be a two-parter. So, we're going to get started right away because we get a lot of ground to cover. What we're going to be doing is taking this image, this wedding photograph here, placing it inside this frame, and then putting that on a wall with some really elegant gallery lighting set above it. We're going to do all that inside of Photoshop. So, first thing I need to do, generate the new document that this is all going to be done in. So I'm going to go Command New. I'm going to set inches. We're going to do this at about 9 by 9 inches. 125 DPI. So, there I have my base image. I'm going to go ahead and se select the background color I'm going to use, which is going to be kind of a burgundy-ish color. Dark reddish, something like that. Just do Option Delete, fill that layer. I'm going to give that wall a little bit of texture by going to Filter, Texture, Texturizer. We'll get this big window here. And I wanted, I'm going to go ahead and use Sandstone. I want to make sure that my light is actually coming from the top, because ultimately our light source will be coming from the top area. And I'm going to leave the Scaling and Relief set relatively low. Simply hit OK. And it's very subtle, but it's there. It will be defined a little later as we add our lighting. Now, we need to go in and add our frame and photograph. So I'm going to go to my frame image. Go over here and select my magic wand tool. And I want to make sure my tolerance is set relatively low, right to about 10. And I want to make sure that contiguous is checked, because I do not want it to select any of the white areas inside the frame here. So I'm going to click on the inside area of that frame. That's white. And I'm going to go out here and click hold down my shift key to add to the selection, click that white area on the outside as well. So I want to select the frame, so all I need, simply need to do is Shift-Command-I. And that will invert the selection. Go over here and get my Move tool, click on the object, and hold my Shift key down as I drag it into my new document. And that will put it right directly in the center. So there we have it. Frames in place. I no longer need that frame file. So simply close that. Now, I'm going to rotate this frame just a little bit, or all the way, because the format of the picture is horizontal. Do it like that, hit Enter, there we have it. Now, go back to my wedding image here. I'm going to do Command A to select all. Copy this to the clipboard, just like that. Now, we'll just minimize that for now. Back inside the frame, I'm going to go and get my magic wand tool yet again, clicking inside that frame area. I'm going to go under Edit to Paste in 2. This is going to do many things when I select this. You see what happens. Boom, it will paste this image inside that selection by placing it on its own layer and then generating a layer mask. So, But you see the layer mask and the image aren't linked by default, which allows me to position this image inside that layer mask wherever I need it to be. In fact, I need to just scale it a little bit. I'm going to bring up my free transform, Control, Control or Command T. And let's just scale this in just a little bit. Just like that. And we'll hit OK. Now, got my frame and image in place. What do I do now? Well, I'm going to do, I'm going to generate the light that's going to be set above here. That's going to be casting the light o onto the image all over the wall. So I'm going to create a new layer. Go over here and get my pen tool. And just above it, I'm going to start generating the shape of my lamp. Now, I'm just going to draw half of the shape, because I'm just going to use Photoshop to duplicate it and mirror the other side of the, of the light. So I'm just going to click, hold down my Shift key, draw a long line here, just give a little line there. Go up here, just give it a little bit of a bend there, here, and there. So there's my basic shape. I'm going to do Command Enter to activate that as a selection, and then Shift Delete. Again, making sure we're on a new empty layer as we're doing this. Fill with a 50% gray. Deselect. Now, I'm going to drag this down and duplicate that layer, and then I'm going to go under Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. And we'll flip that object. I'm simply going to drag it over just a little bit right like there just so it completes both sides of the shape. I'm going to do 
Command E to merge those two layers together. So now they are one layer, one shape. So do a Command A and just align this to the center, just like that. There is the basic shape of my lamp. Now, I've got to define the lamp with some kind of metallic surfacing. So I'm going to do that on a new layer by simply clicking on the new layer icon, going to get my elliptical marquee, and I'm going to draw a really big box here. It's about like that. And setting my colors to their default, cl clicking on those little previews there, I'm going to go under Filter to Render Clouds. Get a big clouds fill here. I'm going to bring up my levels by Command L and increase the contrast of these clouds ever so slightly. Just like that. Hit, hit OK. Now, I'm going to mask these clouds inside that shape that I had made by using a clipping group. I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key, clicking in between the layers. You can see, boom, it places it inside there. Now, here's what we're going to do. With that clouds layer still active, I'm going to go over here and select my smudge tool, which is under the blur tool. You got blur, sharpen, and smudge. Make sure we get the smudge tool here on a normal mode. Strength relatively high. Don't want to go all the way up to 100%, keeping it around 90%. And now I'm simply going to just click and hold down my shift key. Click once, holding down the shift key, drag over here, and then click again. And that will just kind of give that kind of a really smooth uh, kind of blur to it. Do it again on the bottom area here, just like that. And I'm going to bring up my levels once again to define the contrast here just a little bit more. Just a little bit. Not quite that much. Just like that. Now, we're getting there. We're getting close. What I'm going to do now is actually merge these two down because I no longer need it to be masked out because I needed the reason why I had this, if I un undo this clipping group, you can see that's all I've done. I've done two smudges and masked it inside that shape. But I no longer need it now because I didn't need all I don't need all that excess area. So I'm going to merge these two layers down. So now it is one layer. Now I'm going to get my elliptical marquee again. This time I'm going to draw a selection in the bottom area. You see where I had that angled line right there in the bottom of that light? That's actually going to be as if we're looking up inside the light where it's got the glow coming from. So I'm going to select that area of that part and just do Shift-Command-J. And that will copy that to its own layer, just like that. So there I have that right on its own layer. And I'm going to fill this. I'm going to lock the transparency and fill this with white, just like that. Now, I'm going to unlock that transparency again. Double-click on that to bring up my layer styles and we're going to activate an outer glow here. And really going to push the size up way up here. Just about like that. Now I can come back and adjust this as I need it, but just so we can get an idea of where we're going. And then we'll hit OK. Next, I'm going to go back to the layer, which is this light up here. I'm going to bring up my hue and saturation, which is Command U. And we're going to colorize this to give it kind of a brass brassy bronze look to it. Right about like that. Increase that lightness or decrease it. Just about like that. So now we have a light sitting above our art. So next week, on next week's video, we're going to actually generate the light that's coming out of here and cast it onto this image with some shadows and everything like that to really increase the depth and really sell this as hanging on the wall with really elegant gallery lighting on it. So, tune in then, we'll finish this up and we'll see you again.